Welcome back to part two of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way, featuring our special guests. Now let's dive right back into the conversation and continue exploring their incredible journey. Essentially run the way that you would run a business, right? We have different teams yeah. and different departments and, uh, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of helping, you know, develop the capacity of the team leads to help drive, uh, to help drive their teams to ensure that our kids are getting the very best that, and, and which is what they deserve. Absolutely. Um, Completely, absolutely. And, okay, well, let's go to the reason why you created a A to S access to success because, you know, it stems. I th it stems from your childhood and 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 where you began. Can you go into the depth of why you started access to success? Well, um, it wasn't always part of the plan. Uh, <laughs> that much I can tell you. Um, well, I. I was born into an average home and we lost, you know, I, I lost my dad at a very young age and, oh. and just watching my mom go through what she went through, um, you know, having to give up everything she had acquired over her lifetime through all her hard work, just to ensure that she could put food on the table. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you see her go through that, uh, until we kind of, the tank runs on zero, right? You're not sure where the next meal will come from. You're not sure whether you're going to go to school the next day. Um, and so we had, you know, these things, you had to witness these things happen. And as a child, you didn't really know how to help. Um, and I always tell people that I call it the prayer of a, the prayer of a young boy, because, you know, taking off to church, I still remember just going to church after seeing that my mom had nothing left to sell. And I just really fell on my knees and I said, you know, God, you have to use me to change my family's situation. And if you do this, I'll, I'll serve you forever. And I'll make sure that no one has to, you know, go through what we have gone through as a family. And, um, you know, me making my way to England is still today a miracle. Um, <laughs> uh, played in a yeah. competition I wasn't supposed to play in. Uh, somehow the government decided to make, you know, um, passports and there was supposed to be a tournament somewhere in England. We ended up not going. Uh, and then my brother living in England who lived in London came and, and said, okay, why not just come see what basketball is like? And he contacted Joe Forber and, and there I was in England uh, playing at the Amici basketball camp. Uh, and mm -hmm. I still remember, uh, and one of the key moments in my life was, uh, you know, Joe Farber and a host of others sitting me down uh, at the Vida Cafe. Remember that? <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, we sat there and they asked me the question and they said, what do you want to do? And I and I remember saying, I, I want to go to school. Um, I kept thinking about mom and, and everything she was doing at the time. But, um, you know, I... Um, I just made the decision, you know, I said, you need to talk to my mom. And when she, when Mr. Forber called my mom, uh, she gave her blessing and they decided to help enroll me in school. Right. Oh. Um, but part of this for me was I just kept thinking about my friends who, um, who were living the same life I lived, who were going through the same struggles, who had mm -hmm. nothing, you know, and, and one of the key things for me was a pair of shoes at the time. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that um, I was given a pair of shoes by my older brother, but that pair of shoe breaks down, right? Like I was wearing a size 15. Uh, and at that time, a size 15 pair of shoes was probably what my, more than what my basketball shoes was probably more than what my mother made a month. Um, and so when I got a chance to attend Davidson College and I saw that we were being sponsored by nike um i did not I actually thought my teammates had very wealthy parents because they were changing their shoes all the time um you oh. know until i spoke to one of them and they said hey like you could go to the equipment room and meet this guy called will and tell him you need a new pair and i walked i'll never forget walking into the equipment room and i and i saw a stash of shoes that had my name written all over it <laughs> And uh, and he said, you need a pair of shoes? And I said, yeah. And he grabbed me a box and he gave it to me. And, just like and, that. And, you know, I started thinking. I said, well, looks like my teammates have just been tossing their shoes to the side. And I told them to put it aside, you know. Mm. Um, and my end of my freshman year, I took about 20 pairs to Nigeria. End of my sophomore year, 
I took about 40 pairs to Nigeria. And then my junior year, we, uh, we uh, lost in the Elite Eight to Kansas. Um, and so because of that publicity, people heard about what I'd been doing in Nigeria and decided, you know, alums from around the country came and said, let's help him get shoes to, to, the, to his friends in Nigeria. And that kind of began the journey. Um, mm -hmm. It began the journey of me taking shoes to Nigeria because we were able to raise 10,500 pairs of shoes. And I wow. had to go to Nigeria to distribute these shoes. Um, but in, in getting to Nigeria and giving away the shoes, um, it really dawned on me that I had been given so much more than shoes. <laughs> mm. I had been given so, so much more than a pair of shoes. I feel like I'd been given things that you cannot measure. Um, and, and the two key things that I've been given is the gift of love and the gift of consistency. Um, and you look at my life uh, in England, you look at my life in the US, I've essentially been built by a community, or I would even say a village, right? Mm -hmm. um, and my community, they've been there from day one to where I am today. Uh, and so we set out to do the same for every child that walks through our doors uh, to see how we can give them the same gifts that I've been given, not just a pair of shoes, not just mm -hmm. a meal, um, not just uh, a school supply, but to give them that gift of of love and consistency. And so that really inspired this journey uh, with access to success. And, and A2S was founded in 2010. Um, and one thing that is is a consistent message within me is that I do not want to give the children less than I've been given. Mm. Um, I've been given so much. I've been given so much more than you can um, you can numerically measure, right? Uh, the gifts and the blessings that I received are immeasurable by a significant stretch. And that is the kind of gift that I think every child deserves. It doesn't matter where they are born. They deserve the gift of love. Uh, and it doesn't matter where they are born or this, they deserve that gift of consistency, being consistent with a child until they can find purpose. That's what my village that you are a part of, that's what has been done for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I look at everything that I've been through in life, I get to smile because there were just so many gap feelers, right? So many gap feelers along the way. Um, and mm, access to success gets to do that for the children that we serve, for the children mm -hmm. that walk through our doors. And, um, and for me, it becomes a, 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 it becomes a, a, a point of accountability to myself and to the mission uh, to understand that because people saw my story as important, I cannot trivialize the story of anyone that comes around me. I need to take their story seriously. And it doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they've done or what they, they, have, been, they have been said to have done. Um, everybody's story matters. And because so many strangers turned, became friends in my life, I need to make sure that, that those are the same things that I get to pass on uh, to make sure that the measure in which I've been loved, that I get to do so even more when I get the opportunity. Powerful stuff. Uh, I mean, that that is, you are giving them, those children, all those amazing things, but the, the, one, the one of the most powerful thing that they are getting is the opportunity to think because nobody can give them their purpose. They have to think about that themselves, but they they will never get that opportunity to think about it unless uh, they, they, they're, they're given the opportunity to think about it because of what you're doing. Who would have mirrored, who do you think would have mirrored you in your life back then? Who would have been the Andrew Lovedale in your life, would you say? Joe Forber, without a doubt. I knew you were going to say Joe. I just Joe knew Forber, you were going to say Joe. Joe yeah. Forber, without a doubt. You know, I, I, I think he probably thinks it's a joke when I tell him that everything that I'm doing is an extension of what he's built. Um, I do see access to success as an extension of his legacy. Um, just because he asked me a unique question and that question was what do you want to do he heard your wow. story yeah um and and i think that is the same question that is relevant still today 
and, and every child deserves to be asked that question. You know, at A2S, we're kind of in a place right now where we're evolving. And part of what we do is we want to give kids the power of choice. I, I'm saying people need to be champions of empowered choices where, um, you know, kids getting a say in how they want to shape their world. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Joe Forber and his wife, uh, Maggie have been just, uh, an inspiration for me. They attended my parents' teachers meetings, uh, <laughs> and, um, held me accountable when I needed to be held accountable. Um, and what they've done for me and what they've done for so many, I don't think they get enough. I don't think they both get enough credit, um, and and by extension, the Greater Amici Basketball Center community. I think about that place, and I, I can't remember having one bad memory. Everything I, I think about that place so fondly. Um, but Joe Forber, he is the man for me. Who, when I look back at the the the, the passion with which he ran the programs, yeah, the integrity yeah. with the, the integrity he possesses, the way he honored everyone, everyone mattered to him. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's such a role model uh, and people like him are rare into this world. Um, uh, and, and what I've been lucky with and blessed with is that beyond him, when I left, um, I then, he almost passed the baton to someone who is just as exceptional, right? Which was, uh, which is my coach, Coach McKillop, right? And, <clears throat> and then from Coach McKillop, I had someone else, I have someone else in my life right now who I call Pops, who is Mr. King Mawini. So, uh, and that's the gift of consistency. Mm. It's that the people that have become these role models in my life, it seems like they've kind of passed the baton from one to the next. But when they've done it, there's been an amplification of the values that, you know, that I'm trying to reflect or I'm trying to develop, especially those that I carry, that I'm carrying forward from either Nigeria onto Manchester, onto England, onto becoming a parent and, and in, in running a, a foundation. But um, Mr. Joe Forbes set the tone. Yeah. And for, and for that, those who... I'm really grateful. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for those who... Um, a listening Joe Farber is a basketball coach in Manchester, England that founded a basketball club called Manchester, um, uh, Manchester Magic and they've got a female, female structured team um, Manchester Mystics as well and um, I just wanted to let everybody know who Joe Farber was um, going back to the children can you share a, 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 what would be a typical story that comes through the door to A2, um, A2S what would be a story of some of maybe the children, the family, you said they all come from different backgrounds and no matter what they've done, can you just share a typical story? Well, it's, yeah, the, let me just share the story of the kid. Uh, so that picture you saw was in front of the house. Uh, they had been kicked out of their home because they hadn't paid rent. Um, they hadn't paid rent and we mm -hmm. kind of stepped in uh, and we paid rent for the family and ensured that they had meals. So those kids come to the after school academy every day. Uh, the mother actually uh, just a few weeks ago got a small grant to uh, scale her business. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, David and his siblings attend the after school academy. I do remember uh, four years ago when I was leading a session and I was asking questions and, and David stood up and David said, I don't want to go to school. I want to play soccer. And no. And and he said, I want to be a professional soccer player. And I said, well, if you become a professional soccer player, you are going to need to, you know, have the a, a good enough grades to be able to count all your money, right? And he <laughs> that, that that was a pretty good idea. And so I said, how about I give you kids to play soccer? So I actually, when I was coming next time, I brought him an Under Armour bag, an Under Armour soccer ball. I brought him an Under Armour um, uh, kit, a full kit to play soccer. And I said, hey, I'm going to give you this kit. You're going to play soccer, but you're going to go to school because I need you to, you know, know everything you need to know so you can handle your money well. And that was such a good deal. Uh, that was such a good deal. And David kept playing soccer, but he kept going to the after school academy. Uh, and when we opened our ICT center, he learned how to code. Oh, and nice. uh, he just graduated secondary school and he is 
uh, waiting for his results to go to the university uh, to to study. Uh, and that is that is what it takes, right? These kids are they're struggling to find their daily meals. Mm. The parents are struggling to put food on the table. Oftentimes, a typical kid. Uh, spends time on the streets trying to hawk basic food items just so they can supplement the income of their parents, uh, right? And sometimes the parents have no means of income, but they do feel like if my child puts a tray on their head, people are going to have pity on them and buy from them and we can eat from that. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you're doing a small scale business, but you know when business is not going too well, you start to eat your own, you start to eat what you're supposed to sell. And uh, and so for these families, um, getting by on a on a daily basis is very difficult. And and I do say that truly a lot of people are living on the brink of life. Um, and and when that happens, they don't have the choices that they uh, they can't make the choices that they need to make to move themselves forward because it's like life is just constantly hitting at you, hitting you from different directions. So. Um, I hope that what we're able to do for these children uh, by providing them this, the, 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 the things that they need on a daily basis. But we, we prepare about 300 meals every day. Um, wow. We provide a tuition uh, for the kids, ensure that they have the support that they need to go to school. Um, mm. But I do hope that uh, by doing that um, for the typical story um, that... David hears me asking him the question that Joe Forba asked me, and that is, what do you want to do? Yes. Um, and, and and so uh, just making sure that we are honoring his story, we are honoring his journey. Um, and that's just one of 250 kids that walk through our doors every day um, mm -hmm. with stories of struggles, but just uh, hopes and dreams that inspire me. Uh, and and to understand that it doesn't matter where you are born, doesn't matter what corner of the world you come from or what you look like. Every child has big dreams. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's up to us to, to truly find um, ways to honor their hopes and dreams first and then invest in it the right way. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.